Fendi. I think it's like. Are we live? People deluded, I'm back again. I apologize, people. Again, I couldn't do it in time. I tried to get up and sit back down. It weren't to happen in it, people. But yeah, man, I've got to charge my earpods in it. I'm very funny about letting them die down. Now, where was I? Again, it's Sunday. You have to allow me, people. But yeah, man, people deluded. I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. As usual, I appreciate it. Obviously, I hope everyone's enjoying their Sunday morning where the UK is concerned. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. Hope you all have having slash had a good weekend off the back of a strong week moving towards your goals, hopes, dreams, and aspirations. As usual, love to, you know, wish you lot well, well health and good health and all of those sort of things and wish it out to your loved ones and things. Now, obviously, today's a jam-packed day of football and where content's concerned. Please do me a favour and hit the like button on this video. After this, I'm going to be live same platform, YouTube, not Twitch. Make sure you're following on Twitch, though. Um, we go back, we we get we get back on that horse tomorrow. Um, but yeah, people, obviously, we're here at 10, well, let's just say 10 20, 10 20 a.m. in it. So we're here now. 1 p.m. We're gonna be, you know, live for Arsenal versus Watford, uh, 4 p.m. West Ham versus Liverpool, and then after that, at around six ish, six ish, we're gonna circle back around an Arsenal versus Watford because. I'm not going to have time to do the review and get, entertain all your talking points and things like that. So we'll circle back round on that. And obviously today, you know, we knew it was coming. You know, Josh Cronkays had something to say in it. Before we get into that, please let me know your opinions. Make sure you're voting and then things as usual. Make sure you're hitting the like button. You're going to see me start to drop some links for you lot right now as well. So that's Liverpool. That's Arsenal Watford. That's reaction business it's cushy it's cushy it's cushy so yeah man take that all in hit the like buttons do what you can for the engagement and most importantly people sit back get comfortable and then just enjoy a good week a good weekend of football man you know it's a pleasure to be here every day with you lot people it's a pleasure to be here multiple times because you're talking points all of these things make the game interesting for what it is but enough with spamming just before i crack on with with josh Cronkay, what are you guys saying people in general um it is what it is Josh Cronkay is basically our new owner right now. Basically, because it's not, you know, technically they've only owned the club for a short while of time, really, if we're honest with ourselves. You know, big up deluded for getting in the comments there as well. Shout out, Patrick, right back at you. Early DG means something serious is on. I hear that it's true, but same way, I just, you know what, I couldn't do it last night and, you know, I don't want to keep you lot all here um, in the evening because obviously you got work and them things there. So I thought, you know, we'll fit it in. Missing football for you lot, not playing 11 aside once again, misplaying, but we do this for the cause, man. Appreciate the Zimbabweans locked in as well, man. I appreciate all of you lot. I know it's early. I know there's things to do, man. Make sure you're all relaxed and you're enjoying yourself, man. I think this, I think this is the game I've been most nervous about since our run. Arsenal, Watford again. Everyone's acting like it's a formality, but as you know, in the Premier League, anything but. But yeah, we'll deal with that at 1, 1 p.m. Kronke out says, hey, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. Kronke out, 16 years of being neglected. I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. Hit the like button if you're Kronke out, people. Again, many people would say, Josh, you know, you can't really hold a man accountable for the sins of his father and things. Many people might say that. I can't lie to you. I don't really like Josh in the background of this, people. So I'm switching it back to my thing. Well, not my thing, but just looking a bit better. We're in the trading ground. We're at the cha in the change room, sorry. Cranky Jr. out, out, out Edu P off. Board is a dumpster fire. Colin is not here for it, man. Not here for it as well, especially Kawan Erin and Run and things like that. How can winning the league be the goal when man's dad said he didn't buy the title the title to win trophies? I think you mean club, but I hear where you're going. And, you know, it's a bit unfair to find that correlation, but it's true. It's true. You know, it is true. It is true. The way you put it, it's a bit, you know, you do get the vibe that Josh cares a bit more, but I would say if I'm playing devil's advocate, him being younger, slightly more in touch with how you kind of have to treat fans and it's a bit more inclusive. Maybe he knows how to play the game a bit better than his father. He knows how to stroke the fire of the fans, gas them in the right way. You know, for me with Josh, 
I'm a bit wary of what he says because he is, he seems bullish all the time and it don't really look like there's a, a plan, you know, to be excited and all these things. Internally, I mean, when we're unbeaten and we're signing players with potential, we can see what's going on really and truly, man. I think his dad doesn't own the club anymore. I mean, you know, he's, I think it's a family heirloom and it will go to Josh and whatever sons and daughters are there. But it seems like Josh is the one, man. Don't trust anything they say. Birds of a feather flock together, says Adam. You know, T is just saying, big up DG, still cronkey out. I want to ask you a lot of question, yeah? And I know you, I just want to ask a question. Because for me, I think many fans, Arsenal fans around the world, in England, whatever, yeah, we can all see that potentially Kronke isn't the only problem, but he's the overriding problem. Like, we can't just sit here and blame him for all the failures. But fundamentally, everything is a reflection of the owner or a company or a company boss, really. So, you know, if, if he was on winning, we might be where we need to be beyond other things. You know, all of these other guys are... are, are, are are pawns in the system. But um, it feels like at Arsenal, it has to go really bad for us on the field, for us to really keep making our opinions heard and to play devil's advocate. I'm not saying that we should still be there because maybe we have got change. If people are doing their jobs, I'm not saying you should protest and things because all Arsenal fans want to see is matching up stuff. But had we not have gone on this unbeaten run, would we still be, would we be protesting? Because obviously I think if it continued out the first three games left off them fair play, is can we be in a territory where maybe we can keep the togetherness of the fans, the players, the manager and everyone, which you're seeing home in a way, but still make our opinions felt on, on the Cronkies. You know, are the Cronkies, is it a thing where we're leaving them alone because they're actually showing us what we want to see? I don't know, people. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate this early Sunday morning with you lot. As I said, make sure you're getting those like buttons in and the rest of it. On the other hand, since he took over, he spends more money and signs more players than Stan. I mean, it's the same, done, isn't it? He could care more and want to do more, but he's also just a figurehead at the mole. Josh is <laughs> like scolding his cat. Fair play. Josh Cronke interview. Trust me, bro. I can't trust an owner that calls me a legacy fan. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the like button, people. You lot are sorry to come with it. I wouldn't say this is a negative stream by me, but yeah, man, I... I I would have thought there'd have been some happier souls, man. You lot are vexed. 47 likes, people. We're so close to, to, to 100. Can we move closer to that, people? 53 likes and we've hit our target. And then you hear me stop moaning on about that. As I said, people, make sure you set your reminders for the other bits and pieces of content to come. But yeah, man, with that being said, uh, you know, I think it's, well, you know what? Keep your opinions coming. What have you said? Nice work, DG. Josh and Kronke, they need to provide more for the club in terms of financial, not only through word of mouth. They need every they need everything to be in action. I hear you, man. Watching DG on, on my 86-inch TV. Shout out to you, man. Bloody hell, that's a good TV, isn't it? It must be nice, man. Must be nice. Do you think we are going to win any serious titles with them in charge, DG? I mean, based on what I'm seeing, no. Not anytime soon because, you know... They haven't always wanted to win stuff, no matter what they've told us. They haven't always installed the right processes. They've always, you know, fans have been misled. I know the form's a bit healthier of the club and stuff like that, but what's that, nine, ten games assuming you win today in comparison to years? So I don't know. I think, you know, the fact that they've been here for a while, you know, been the, the, the full owners since 2018, and we haven't moved that much closer to success. In fact, since then, we've got further and further away from Europe. I can't say you're going to, but then hopefully, you know, for me, I think the only way Arsenal win a title until anything changes is if we see overperformance from a manager or the players and whatnot. You know, for me, I'm at that stage where talk is cheap, doing is expensive. You know, if you do, then then I have things to get behind, man. You know, but at the same time, we did spend money in the summer. I can't, you know, for me, I just wanted to see the club moving serious. You know, I understand if people still still want him want him to get rid and all of these things, but for me. I just wanted him to look like an owner. So, again, if you're backing the manager, if these are the players, the, the players that we signed this summer, if these are the players the managers asked for and we can see how they tie in long and short term and we see them develop and grow year in, year out, that's fine. I think many fans just want to see direction. In a day and age, in, in a fan base or as a, as a football club where you're, as an Arsenal fan, you're seeing, di every team we play, you're seeing direction. You know, and it gets angrier and angrier if I'm honest, if if I'm honest with you. So I just want to keep seeing direction. I just want to see direction. I just want to see things correlate. I just want to know that people have that burning desire to want Arsenal to do well. Again, the jury is still out, but again, credit where due. Um, if I'm if I'm if I'm honest with you, you know, Josh needs to show ambition that makes up for the past 10 years of failure for me to have anything to trust. Sorry, I'm late, DG. I'm fully cronkray out. I've been to multiple protests. But it has to be said that they have backed Arteta. 
And that's it, you know. They have kind all I wanted to all I want to see is that you back to is that first and foremost, all the empty statements you lot make, you're you're moving towards making them actually not be empty statements and have something of substance. I want to see you back the manager and reflect what we're doing as a football club. I want to see you be a bit hands-on. So if I'm seeing all of this, it is what it is. Because for me, I just felt like especially last season and obviously still to a degree now, and, and I know the turn of the the turn of the, the form changes it, but it just feels like we've got an absent old in, in Stan. He's Josh, it, Josh is a puppet and whatnot uh, to a degree. You know, you've got Edu at times who has looked out of his depth and is still learning. Arteta the same. And it's almost like in the same way, if Saka or Smith Rowe or Martinelli, if these players, on these young players on the field, if they're struggling or whatever, I'm looking at Arteta to, yo, what's going on? How are you going to kind of look after them? Rightly or wrongly, I think the same about Arteta and Edu because for as much as I criticise them, it has felt for a while that they're kind of crippled in their own jobs. Like when we, we pissed about all summer trying to get Partey that year, we didn't sign a certified partner. You know, we're, Arsenal, we've been notoriously great at if we need, if we've got a number 10, we need a striker. We're not going to sign a striker. We might need a, we might get the striker in the DM. We need a centre half to make sure we look decent. We're not grabbing that. Or we've got two good centre halves. We ain't got a keeper historically. Now, now I've you know, and I'm not gonna lie, Kronke have spent a lot of money, really and truly. It, it, it might not be the levels we want and stuff, but they have actually spent a lot of money and and whatnot. From a business point of view, what Stan Kronke has done with Arsenal is gonna be amazing for him, not necessarily us. But um, yeah, like I said, if they back to man in the summer, you know, it's a by Arsenal standards, a significant outlay last summer. That's all I want to see because again, we can still criticize them, but I have to say, listen, Arteta and Edu, between you lot, it's you lot now. When I look at owners of other clubs, you know, again, Newcastle might be that in the future, but I would say the sit the, the way Leicester speak. I know Villa aren't a good example, but when Villa sold Grealish, just to hear the transparency around that as well, about why they're selling him, they, they, they made their mind up to buy other players and the rest of it. You know, there's a lot of transparency and clarity. And I feel in today's day and age, when social media and all of this and all these things were so much ingrained together, football club and fans, I don't think the club have always leveraged that. I think they haven't always listened. It seems like, you know, they haven't known how to play the game. Even if you don't believe something, if the overriding sentiment with the fans is a, is something I think a lot um, you got to play the game and I think a lot of their things more often than not come across as a bit tone deaf and the rest of it I swear Daniel Ek has been to more games than Cronkays combined you know every now and again you see propaganda pieces in the athletic and stuff about how they're there but yeah you're probably right man how does he look after young players? Answer is on Matteo Guendouzi and Saliba. Awful. I think that's a bit harsh because Saliba's going from strength to strength at Marseille. He did want to go out on loan. Guendouzi, I mean, you can't, as much as I think he should be here, bro, you can't sit here and just say and, and do the Arteta woe is me thing for Guendouzi. You know, there's no smoke without fire. And to be fair to you, you know, you could sit there and say, you know, again, I know these players are, are, are slightly more experienced, but Tommy Asu, you know, he backed Aaron Ramsdale. You know, Ben White, he's backed him. You know, Saka and Smith Rowe are playing a lot of football and Gabriel and all these things. So I might agree with you where Guendouzi's concerned, not so much the lever, but we have to be a bit fair, Colin. But I hate Colin, but I hear you, man. That's a great that's a great um, comment. More time, it's the direction. We have switched multiple philosophies of late, but it's also due to an experience. And that's it's just a project for me, you know. It's like one minute, you know. For me, when I really start giving up is... You know, I'm, I'm sure most fans, we believe for a sec, all right, cool, you know what, we're broke. Once we pay off this stadium, we buy a Munich level, all these things, we might do it. And then for me anyways, you know, it seemed like we paid off that piece. Apologies. It felt like we paid off the Emirates piece and then you're seeing what O's will come in, won't you? Santi come in. Alexis come in, you're like, okay, cool, all right, we can we can maneuver with this. We're, we're getting out of it. We haven't seen that, and you're right. We do this for loss. We we I always say it, broski. We love our unfinished project. You know, we did we've done the youngster thing before with the English players, we've done the more experience, but we never quite finish it. It's like a puzzle, it just needs a couple more pieces, and then you just buy a new one. It don't make sense. We're in love with unfinished projects. As I was saying, if we need a defense, if we've got a 10, we might not have a defensive mid. If we've got a striker, we've got no creative man. No creative man. We ain't got a striker. you got a left back. you got a dodgy right back. you got two good centre halves. you got a dodgy keeper. you got a good keeper. you got a crap back four. You know, you got one good midfielder. You ain't got an next good midfielder. We like all of that stuff. So I would say that. And for me, I feel too many people have been left to their own devices. And when things are going wrong at a club, I, I ain't really seen direction. And I think that's what our fans kind of need, really. And as I said, you know, 
for me, if we care about being self-financing, we haven't always spent money the best way. Let's be real. The flip side of it is, you know, we don't get the, the best of young players, which I ain't seen the processes change there. You know, we we, we over-pay for some players. Like, let's be real. Emotion aside, yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of Lacazette. I'm not saying he's a flop or anything, but is there bang for the buck with the 52 mil? You know, is the, you, you get it, Xhaka, is there too much bang for the... Some players have done better than others, but these pay, players polarise opinion a lot. Pepe, my problem is... There's not enough bang for the buck. Now, I'm saying Kronke isn't involved in the scouting and things, but if you're an owner of a, of a company and, you know, you've got a finance account and, uh, you know, finance department and, you know, they're in charge with spending and you're spending mad peas and you're not getting mad results, you're asking what's going on there because the, the flip side I'm getting at is money has been spent. We actually haven't seen too much bang for our buck. And for me, I don't mind that you're not... I actually, a lot of things I actually like about uh, about about the Kronkes. I, I, like, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite. On another hand, I actually like the fact that they're not too hands on. They'll leave a man to their own devices and do whatever. In theory, that gives that gives an owner or whatever. Like if I'm in a working company, you don't want your owner or the manager to be, you know, looking down your shoulder all the time when you're trying to type and stuff. Think about it in, in a working environment. If the guy has confidence that you look, I employed you, you look, do your job. In theory, that sounds wicked, you know. You know, all right, cool. I don't have to be here all the time. I don't actually care that Kronke doesn't care about football. My point is he don't care about his business at Arsenal well enough to make it succeed. He's cool with what he's doing and leveraging it elsewhere. Because if he was a silent investor, but when money is being spent and we're not getting banged for our buck, there's question marks. When people are failing, there's question marks. You know, you're getting deals, you know, really looking to revamp what we do with confirming deals, the level of profile of player we have, the continuation. Again, you know, serious stuff like Aubameyang. Certain clubs would... I'm not saying Aubameyang needs replacing, but he's not 20, he's not 19. You know, there's going to come a day where he needs replacing. An owner might say, yo, listen, you have to do that. And I don't, I don't get the vibe that he wants to win. Like, I'm not saying you have to do the Abramovich thing, but it makes me jealous looking at Abramovich. Even the Newcastle owners and their team might even go down just to know man are there all the time. I know on occasion they're, 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 the Cronkays are there. I know the Athletics say they're ones and twos in relation to it. But yeah, man, hit the like button. Make sure you're commenting, support the thing. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Tanya. What have you said? Hi, Deluded. Great show. Appreciate that. Thank you very much for tuning in. Personally, I think Pepe hasn't been given a decent run of games. When he plays well, he still gets dropped. I hear you on that. You're, it, it's, it's factual with, with, with the Pepe point. You know, again, you need to be given a run of form, but same time, he does he does frustrate a lot. But at the same time, my point wasn't actually to just get at Pepe. It's, you know, 72 million. I'm, I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not trying to attack him. It's just we spent that outlay. What did we get? Mustafi, what did we get? Lucas Perez, what did we get? And the many other names, you know, you start with, because again, Arsenal fans, we I do think to a degree we sound like sports your kids because you know it's not that we're not that we don't need to spend more we spent 150 million and that's what the sky sports are painting and stuff like that that we're that we're not broke but that was looking after a lot of a lot of areas you know you look at Chelsea I mean yeah Chelsea 90 million on one player Man City on 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 Grealish we can't afford to do things like that but my point is we haven't got too many when we spent them them peas we haven't got too many players that have just banged like there's no because I'm pretty sure with Pepe, we, we roll up 10 Arsenal fans here. You're saying that I agree with you, but I also think he's frustrating. And I'm sure there's many fans that would be a bit harsh. Two men are saying one thing, two other people are saying the next one. So this is my point. Again, we need, is anyone stopping and thinking when we're putting this outlay on players, there's an issue. And it's not even just the big money signings. It's all of the signings, you know, we've still, right now, Cedric's irrelevant, in it? And I know time's a changer, but... You know, Cedric's nowhere near the first team, and that's not that that's a big contract. And there's been many others. It's not just the big monies, it's the free transfers, it's the contract renewals, it's the uh, learning from hindsight and applying better foresight. These are the many things that I want to see. I don't expect everyone to get everything right all of the time, but it's one of them ones, if I'm honest. Empty platitudes and meaningless rhetoric spread out again. Will, you're killing me, bro. You see the first two words? Well, if that was a madness, mate. I know I done all right in English, but you need to allow me and dumb it down a bit. But anyways, you said, regardless of current form, the situation Arsenal has been in has been unacceptable and ownership won't fool me with their interviews. Facts. You know, facts. All about using a quick, easy fix to keep fans quiet. Signing Pepe for 72 million was a joke, but it kept everyone quiet for a window. And I do think, you know, on one hand, listen, I understand people if you want to do the Kronke out thing and stuff. But for me, I I want them to go because they're not serious. But if you just reflect what I want to see as an owner, then I'm, I'm going to say, all right, cool. It's the same way with Arteta. In last November, you should have been sacked. 
Start of the year, regardless of COVID and things, the way the team was moving with the context of that, it wasn't certified. It wasn't good enough. You needed to go. Right now, you're doing all right. I don't think you can you can scream Arteta out, but you, you, you'll give him his credit at this moment in time. Nine games, 10 games today, you know, it's 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 you can't you can't run away with the houses with that, but you get the point, man. I ain't trusting any of them. They haven't shown enough to convince they want the best for Arsenal. Do we play Odegaard today? He'd play on the bench for me. And Lee Conkey breeds mediocrity, just humor me and research all of his teams and their trophy records. That's something a lot of you say from time to time, which, again, there, there's, there's no smoke without fire. You can't just get that from nowhere. There has to be a correlation there, really and truly. And for me, we all know football or soccer is probably at the least of his things. Like, I think Josh cares a bit more, but at the same time, maybe they're just being smart. He's younger, he's more hands-on. He might look like, oh, it's not my fault. My dad's a madman, but I want good. We'll have to see, man. We'll have to see, man. These are the same owners that said they know the fans don't trust them for the last 14 years, but do nothing about it. Boy, boy. And I mean, that's a good thing. Manager saying enough's enough. Cronke has been a leech that took out of the club for years, but in recent windows, we invested more than any. We've invested more than most clubs in the Premier League and around Europe. Money hasn't been an issue really, and that's the thing for me, Ryan. It's moved away from money, and it's like money management. How's it being spent at a day and age? If Arsenal are meant to be self financing, then we can't afford to get it wrong. We can't. If see, if it didn't work out, let's for argument's sake, with for Grealish or Lukaku. Chelsea can fix them situations very quickly. They can spend that on the next player. And, you know, judging by definitely City, you know, with that Marina lady, how she's a fantastic negotiator, um, in my opinion. And it, well, it's a factory. It's not my opinion. They'll somehow get some peace for, it, for, for that. Signings go wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But for us, we don't know how to do that. Our risk management or assessing players according to risk clearly ain't good enough, you know. And for me, again, if you own a company and you're letting people think about it, if you are the manager of, if you're the owner of any business, big or small, and 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 you've invested money and it's not being spent properly, what are you gonna say? You're gonna Joe Blogs, you know, you know, Jolene Davis. Let's get a lady's name in there. You're gonna pull them into your office and say, "What's going on? You know, we've spent this and that, and it ain't worked." You know, it's like it's like a business, you know, it's like a trucking company buying trucks and the trucks are shit, like or the trucks are not working, or it's got bare mileage. It's you know, so there's got to be inquests into that. And for me, we can't say that that isn't gonna happen. Now I sit here and I, and and I'll be fair, I'll be fair. I think so far it started the year. We were saying it started the season, sorry, we were saying, all right, boy, we cool, we spent this piece. I was saying anyways, I look at Lokonga, I'm excited about Lokonga, you know, is it? You know, a lot of fans slated me for Ramsdale, not on no Einstein thing, you know, I, like I said, with Ben White and Ramsdale, if we was going for a goalie and centre-half, I wasn't screaming to sign any of them, but I wasn't against Ben White, and I was actually more for Ramsdale than not, I, feel, I didn't think he was this good, I didn't think he had that ball-playing ability, I didn't think he'd have a lot of these things, but I didn't think he was a bad keeper, but at the start of the year, we sat there and we said, alright, cool, we've spent 150, yeah, does this squad look a bit better? Yeah, true. Say everyone's got potential. It ties in. Now, fair play. You know, only time will tell. But since they've been playing together, like everyone that's been signed, they've been doing things. And I have to, I'll give you credit. All right, cool. The money's being spent a bit better there then because you've done a stress test. And, you know, uh, we hear reports that Eddie wanted Emerson Royal. Arteta said no. Tommy Asu. You know, somebody wanted Neto. Someone said no. Ramsdale, Lokonga, bring him in. You know, Tavares wasn't on our tetas list. He said we need a backup. So the scouting team went and done that one. All right, cool. It's working for us. So again, when I see summers like this, things are making sense. But when I see summers like the summer before, where it's very reactive in terms of who we're bringing in, who we're bringing out, certain players are here and not there. Um, and we're bringing in Partey, where we should have brought Partey in for, look, quicker and so he could have had a pre-season. And you, any other club brings in that partner for Partey. Um, and again, we know if there was a release clause, we're not getting Partey. So our negotiating needs to change, really and truly. So I'll give us credit where due potentially for that, man. He talks a lot. We back, we've been back this summer and Partey last summer. We can't complain. Have to see, man. We'll have to see. Big up yourself, Halimi. I hope you're doing well and safe. Money has definitely not been an issue lately. More the board. We need an overmaster direct and Ten Hag to manage and we'll do much better. We're all smiling now because Man United is having a poor time right now. But let's have it right. Arsenal this season will definitely be up and down. United still have a better team. I mean, we've got a naive team. 
You know, we've got a young and naive team. And I feel that's that's the, the biggest thing me for me with the fans. It's like we can get behind them. You know, I feel the young players can be a beacon of hope. You know, you can say that we shouldn't rely on Smith Rowe and Saka. And we can say this that maybe they should score more and do more than that. But I think within the context, most fans say, you know what, these are young players. The club shouldn't be relying on them, but they're young players we can identify, we can get behind them. Sometimes I've looked at this team in in, in many years. Don't identify with any of the players and it don't have to be because you look like me or you're from England or whatever. It's just the, the spirit, the fight, all them things are not identifiable. They've all looked bewildered. You know, the manager at times has also looked bewildered. The people around him have looked bewildered. And when you're looking for one serious single direction, you can't see it. You know, if things are going wrong, the camera is going to point towards Roman Abramovich at Chelsea. Somehow they're going to pick up on Salix Ferguson. You know, Dalglish is completely irrelevant to Liverpool in terms of them decisions, but things are going to be made, you know, really and truly. And that's all I want to say. I hope this summer is a turning point. I hope this summer makes things happen. You know, I really hope, I hope this things happen. P things get, you know, people get things wrong all the time, but it seems that Arsenal get them wrong, wrong if that's even a word, more often than not. Pardon me. Apologies for that. What do you go to Walmart for? Cheap knees. That's what it will be at Arsenal. <laughs> the fair play, man. Fair. You did him dirty there. <laughs> uh, when he said the thing about the 48-hour 40, 40 period not defining us, it really showed how out of touch he is at the club. Because these man live in a bubble, bro. You know, for years. And this is actually one thing I like about Arteta. There's a degree, and some of the new players, and even Ramsdale, there's a degree of honesty. When we played rubbish, man, are saying we played rubbish. And you don't need to just slay us. We can say we did this good, but we need to improve. It always feels that, like, you know, if we played, bearing in mind, football's a 90-minute game. Yeah, we might be slow of the first 10. A team might score two, three goals and that's the game done. Then after that 10, we have chances, we wake up and all of these things. And we say if and but that first 10. It's many a times I've seen the players speaking, people, it's almost like we'll focus on that on, on that positive 80 and forget the, fir the, first, the, the first 10. Well, I'm not saying to slate the team, but it's just lacking balance. And for me in life, as, and I think at the club as well, when people are, and I'm not saying to be extremely positive or ex extremely negative, and we all, and I speak for most rational fans in that regards, but it just feels when things are going right, man can take all the plaudits. There's never not no such thing as too positive. When things are going wrong, and like I said, in the, in line with balance and the rest of it, you're negative, you're this, you're that. Like even now, this could be seen as a negative stream, folks. You know, really and truly. When we haven't, we're just having an honest chit chat about Arsenal, saying that we're 84 likes. Can we keep it moving, people? But DG, look who we have beaten in that time. We're still live levels off where we need to be. Ryan. A blind man could see. This is why I tell fans, be easy with the sentiment. We've won nine games. Well, I mean, we're unbeaten in nine games. We might go 10 this 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 weekend by God's grace. But like Arteta said, we ain't done nothing. We ain't achieved nothing. You know, we've seen this from Arsenal before. We can win games. We can go on little runs. But can we do it when it counts? You know, we're going to drop points this season. Can we react quickly? Can we bounce back? Can we minimise those losses and draws and drop points? Can we maximise our good form? Because one thing I've actually liked, you know, I don't think we've, pulled up any trees fair play you know what we beat Leicester um you know we didn't beat an inform you know we bucked an informed Palace team and an informed Brighton team we didn't lose but we could have given a bit more one thing I've liked is that we played Villa Chelsea and kind of to a degree Leicester and they've been in bad form typical years you've seen people lose 10 games they play Arsenal they win the 11th it's not been that kind of party. There's still a lot to be said, but, you know, I I, I see why fans would be a bit more healthier because, you know, everybody's singing from the same hinge sheet, home and away. There's a bit more togetherness. The young, play, the young players are doing their thing. The new signings are all giving a bit of confidence. You know, there's a... I keep saying, you know, so far this season, it's the good, bad and the ugly and we're going to see a lot more of that. We ain't proved nothing yet. We ain't done nothing yet. But it's only when things really cock up, not that I want it to be, that fans want to sit here and listen, man. There's no consistency either on or off the field. They said our was their big love two summers ago. The last summer he's there for half the price and they don't get him. I hear that, Colin, and I'm as, I'm as frustrated as you. But at the same time, do we know the variables? Did we try and go for our and he said, I'm not, I don't want to leave? Is there something to do with the agents? I don't agree with any of that. But I also think we have to, not that I'm finding excuses. It's just we can have our story. They can have their story. And then there's a third story, which is the truth. And as fans, we can only comment on what we see, Colin. So I hear that for me. I agree with you. It seemed like, it, you know, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like seeing a dream girl and, and you're, you're just pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. And then she's finally said, yo, let's go for a date. You're not on it. Like, what's going on? It don't make sense. Listen, I've always been critical of the Cron case. But what can 
But what can you say to people who greenlighted 150 million to be spent? As of now, all the signings are pretty are, are playing pretty well. So let's see how it goes. And John, you can't disagree. That's that's what I said earlier. If you spent if you spent money and we can see the system and why you bought these players, what can anyone say? Certain people might fail, signings go wrong, players go in bad form, but you can't comment. You can we could have our opinions about yeah, Ramsdale, this and that. Now, any sane Arsenal fan is Fair enough, Ramsdale's doing his thing. I think out of all of them, the jury for me is still out on Ben White, but you can't say Ben White's been a flop. You can't say he's pulled up any trees. It's a Tony Adams thing and the rest of it, but you can't say he's been a flop yet. Ex-players of the club are part of the problem, only trying to keep the door open for themselves with a job. To say that you would take Arteta over Conte is deluded. Ryan, who said that? I'm a bit unaware of that. Martin Keon said he prefers Arteta over Conte. Uh, boy, I think that there's a, there's a, there's a bit of cap there. You know, there's a bit of cap. There's a bit of cap there. If I'm completely honest with you, with a lot of cap there. Odegaard will come good, man. No Odegaard slander. Odegaard's do, gonna do his thing, man. Odegaard will do his thing. I will be our out until he challenges for titles. The FA Cup and a good run doesn't mean you can be you can be comfy in this job. We are the third biggest club in the country, but we act like a preschool centre. And who is that on the owners, broski? I hear you, though, man. Uh, morning, DG. Nice to be here with the nation on this Sunday morning. One love to you, my guy, Paul. Hope your health is doing well. Let's grab another three points today and move on to Liverpool. I don't trust Josh, but he's not going anywhere, so I'm not wasting my time moaning. I mean, they're not going anywhere, and this is why I'm getting at them. If you don't want to, in general, if you, all right, cool, if you're staying, listen, I, there's no point, as much as I might want you lot gone in that, there's no point turning myself blue in the face if you don't. All right, cool. If you want to stay, just make sure the system and what you're doing actually matches up. It's as simple as that. That's, that's all I would say. Awa said he wants Champions League football, not Arsenal's problem. And it's also a World Cup year as well. He might say, he might say, you know, I want to stay. Maybe because he didn't have the best of seasons last year at Lyon. He said, I don't want to leave like that. We're at 97 likes. There's 181 of you locked in. If you have not hit that like button, hit that like button. Unexpected high bills due. If you haven't, you know, you lot will win the lottery if you have. If you do not hit that like button, Arsenal ain't getting three points. I heard that story, DG. Couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> Bro, it's true. Like, it's true. See, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense, but it don't. Like, with the hour one, I don't get it. And I'm a big fan of hour. All of the, how much videos did I see here titling hour, titling hour to the point where I started believing it? And then I said to myself, you know what? You bring Bruno Guimaraes, the man can move with that. It's cool in it, but it weren't to happen in it. You know, again, I personally think we're bidding for players we know we're not getting, like Locatelli, you know, personally. But it, I have to be, I have to imagine that we did try and go for a midfielder and um, similar to I feel Leno staying, we might have got another keeper. I think Xhaka having cold feet about the Roma move or, you know, being a couple million off in terms of the what the fee that they wanted to pay or we wanted to accept and, and them things there. Really, I feel we're going to live or die by our midfield this season and I feel the, the, the worst is yet to come, if I'm honest. Um, I don't trust the Cronkies. Big up all the members, moderators and subscribers. I don't trust the Cronkies. The fact they wanted to take Arsenal to the America, to America in the Super League, that was the process they knew they'd make money. Dan, I hear you and I agree with you and I'm not apologising for that, but I'm not... I'm actually not going to get at clubs, at owners for being greedy and making peace because they're all on it. Um, you know, I'm not going to get at them any more than, than I know Roman Abramovich is not Josh Kroenke. So Chelsea fans are going to just going to give him a slap on the wrist and we're going to try and lead a crusade. But everyone tried to do it really and truly. You know, these lot are money men, you know, to be fair, they need to work on ways of, of earning more money at the club and things. Danny, I, Dan, I hear you though, because my actual, that's me being devil's advocate. I just think there's no integrity. These people, whether it's Arsenal or elsewhere, they know we love the game. They know we're the little guys. We don't we don't make no moves happen and things. They know that, you know, we're not as we're emotionally attached to clubs, so they can do a lot of fuckery. And I find it very I found it, sorry, very ironic. Sky Sports were, you know, bashing the Super League and all of these other guys. It's like you lot are just vexed you didn't get the piece because you lot tried to zang us. What was it like? Burnley, Southampton, or one of them games there, they were saying 15 quid last year. They're moving, man. This season, Xhaka hurt when we start to change success. Tini hurt, in comes Tavares. His hand has been forced to success. Do you know what? Sometimes I do think that because I think Smith Rowe last season, it's like he's... Sometimes with Arteta, I don't know if he's just stumbled... I don't want to say you just stumbled across these things, but you've just stumbled across these things because... 
You didn't really want to play Lacazette. It became clear that Aubameyang can't press on his ones. He came involved. You know, Smith Rowe got his chance last season only after we saw Lacazette and William. We tried to do the striker thing with them. You know, they see there's been a couple of those with them, them things there. Now, I know Gabriel was still learning last season and he's gone through a lot of bumps and bruises and still developing. But it felt like the minute he had COVID and certain things happened, Gabriel was rubbed out the team. And it just felt like last season he lent upon more experience. But yeah, man. Interesting comments, man. But all the success has essentially been forced on Arteta. Last December, the youth movement started in December because results were, were terrible. In comes Smith Rowe. This is, I, I, I can't lie to you. I agree with that. You know, I agree. I agree with that. You know, that's what I was saying earlier. I don't know if these are genuine things you want to do or your hands being forced. Are you just stumbling across these things, really? I don't know. Only time will tell. You know, I, again, I look at the back five and playing out from the back and one, two of them things there. I get it. I see that. When I look at the creativity, it looks like we're just stumbling across things. And for me, I don't know about any of you, but for me, it's the midfield for me, man. I can't, like, until that midfield looks dirty. I know Lokonga and Party are doing all right. I know Odegaard and Party have looked all right. I know there's been a couple of options, but I'm not convinced in our midfield in general. I'm not convinced in a first choice suitable partnership, and I'm not necessarily convinced in the options we have. You know, I like Lokonga, of course. I like Partey, of course. I just think we need two midfielders that are a bit of a different, different ilk and can do what Xhaka does, but to a greater standard, clearly. So it's brazy in that regards, man. Very brazy. Just crunky. Make some time stamps. Keep the talk, keep the talk coming, people. This is fantastic. Nothing was lucky about our FA Cup run. I, I think that's a bit disrespectful. I never said that, but I think that's a bit disrespectful. Obviously, the only thing I might, you know, you could say is luck is that them times there are Arteta's kind of an unknown entity. They don't know what it, you're about. You know, they can't go on they can't go on, on, on their websites and find what your team plays like and patterns of play. And I think, you know. That get that was also what helped us as well is that you know the season was when he, when we won, we was battered, we was bruised. There was the managerial bounce. Arteta was a positive a, a positive sort of vibe. We won. Listen, you know we won off their own back. There was no luck around that. You know we didn't have no look at the run to get to that final. We earned that. We earned that. I would say though, I do think the FA Cup run created a false sense of security in that Arteta has fixed a lot of things that you know probably take years to fix and real long months than that to fix it's like he's fixed it in two seconds when that's not the case um and i think there was an air of complacency where really that summer we should have said raw we had a terrible season ended it with a trophy it feels amazing to win silverware it feels amazing to achieve goals and things like that what would it be like to get back into europe to challenge for top trophies to just you know be consistent for a long period of time instead that summer wasn't really the catalyst i thought it was it was gonna be but yeah, man, it is, it is what it is in that regard. Really. The success so far has been forced on Arteta. He just can't be forced out of the door. 100% agree with the midfield. We need a certain midfielder for us to really improve. And this is the thing, you know, we've got a young team. They're going to show naiveties. And I think Arteta has shown naiveties because I feel we need to find stability and a way of playing. But games like I look at, games like Brighton, maybe Liverpool coming up, but as much as I feel Thomas Partey and Congo were second best and outclassed and outmatched against Brighton, they're two men in midfield and Brighton went with a three. And I think we all knew that was going to be the thing. Is that any coincidence? Coriella and their right back played amazing against us a couple of weeks after that. They didn't look, didn't look amazing. Controversial opinion. Emre was a better manager. I mean, he's won how much Europa League? That's not controversial. Had us playing better football, went on better runs and had Arsenal closer to where we want to be. But because he isn't the best looking Spaniard, I think... I think that's a bit extreme, you know. Better manager. I mean, the CV says it, isn't it? He's gone and he's got success elsewhere. Um, I hear you, though. He did finish fifth with a point off, but I feel the football was quite dire. You know, I do think he, you know, I do think there was elements of Arteta playing well, and I do think the same with Emery. But I did think that, that the, the football was dire. I do think the players didn't, didn't, didn't play for him. I do think, you know, there's a bit of rose tints with Una Emery, especially when you look at Arteta. But you can't, you know, you can't really say that. For me, you can't really disagree with that, sorry. For me, the better run thing is tired, man. I give Arteta full credit for Smith Rowe because that Chelsea game, he could have put Willie in 10, but he chose not to. I hear you, he needed to make a brave decision, but it was that one where, you, bro, you've, you've rid for Willie so much, he's not riding for you, you're looking like an idiot playing him. It's one of them ones, man. Interesting comments, man. Hit the like button, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're setting your reminders for the other content. Big up, DG. Whilst Arteta has had some luck, having to react and put these men in. We're always talking about players grabbing a chance they get. 
well, yeah, that's on the players. Yeah, grab the chance, really. You know, you have to grab your opportunity, but, um, you know, you've also got to be given some man. unused assets. Guendouzi, Torreira, Saliba. To be fair, Torreira, don't, his heart's not in England. Guendouzi did start against City and was playing. He, he, he pissed off the man the minute. Saliba, I have think we've been very reactive in relation to his development and stuff like that. So, yeah, man. But that's the point. I just said, you know, I just literally just said Lokonga and Partey looked out of their depth, but they're going against a midfield free. They're going against a three at the back, so it's a five in midfield. But at the same time, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, is it really Xhaka's role? Because Lokonga in that game, he wasn't being judged with. He wasn't being asked to progress with the football. He just literally on the left hand side of midfield. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, you know, is that an excuse for Lokonga playing poorly? If you play on the left or the right hand side of midfield, you need to be able to cover out in wide areas. You need to look left and right. So I, I don't think it is the same. You know, you're literally being asked to cover the space. Tierney happens. That happens in F in Sunday League. Your fullback goes forward as a centre mid. You've got to tuck in that space. So I wouldn't say it's necessary. If 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 he was asking Lokonga to do the playmaking thing, which I didn't see, then that's different. And Lokonga, I think he's come to terms with the fact that he's probably an eight. Then he is um, a six. Great player, Lokonga, though, man. Terrible man, it's re it's reactive. I, what I would say with under with uh, with 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 Emre and our Emre Emre was very reactive. They're both defeative managers, I think, in big games. You know, again, they've been on the front foot at times. Um, you know, they've been on the front foot at times, but they think they're both similar in that they're both reactive. They'd rather take. They'd rather their defence, if they was in a fight, they'd rather duck and dive and take punches than, you know, fuck it, I'm just going to slump you, innit? Like, if I slump you, you can't slump me. And I want to I wanna see I wanna see a bit a bit of that, really. Um, I would say, for me, I have seen Arteta's high pressing and stuff, but more often than not, it is quite more reactive than Emre, you know? Arteta's a bit defeated. If Emre's, I just didn't see what was going on, and, you know, it was just at a slower pace. Quite similar. It's irrelevant whether Emre could stay. They were literally taking the piss. John, I love the way you phrase things, my guy. And you said it, but once you lose, once you lose the the team, it's a myth. Like I like to, I, I think Emre had a lot of things done poorly, and I think the players did him, but as uh, did him dirty. But as you said there, like once you lose them, they start taking the piss out of you. It's a myth. I don't quite think that they've turned on Arteta yet, and I think with Arteta, you know. He, the, it's it's like with Oli at United. It's like you sit there and it's like you know you, as much as the board don't like problems, you know. I'm sure the managers don't like problems. I'm sure a, a certified manager is going to be a headache for these boards. When you've got Oli and Arteta to a degree where they know they shouldn't be in these roles in two of the biggest clubs in the land, they're not going to give you too much problems. Arteta as a manager is such an enigma in my opinion. I literally can't read what he wants to do with this team. I'm supposed to trust a process, but I can't really see a, a vision. Every now and again, I get ones and twos, and then it is what it is, man. On this question, who has a better record against the top six, Arteta or Embry? I don't know, but I'd actually think it's my bias would say, would make, I wanted to say Embry, but it probably is Arteta, you know. It probably is Arteta. Khalid said, I understand the opinion on Emre being a better manager, definitely on CV, but why when we look at what Arteta does, there's always context and not Emre? There should be context with Emre. They both just need to go, like, they both have moving mad. I do think Emre got, one thing that I think is sad for Emre, he got sacked for less, you know, he didn't get none of these excuses. You know, he asked for Partey. He never got part eight. Arteta actually got it. At times, Arteta has come across as a spoiled child. Like I, I've got the expensive PlayStation, but I need the expensive Xbox One. And that, you know, it just seems at times Arteta has moaned about things every manager in the Prem has to go through at times. So I do think, and and the November Emery is not lasting last November. No manager is lasting no, no last November. But my man here. Yeah, I think that's looking at it with rose tints, but fair enough. Arteta already has a better record against M against the top six than Emre and Wenger. I have no idea how. Bro, he's already done his thing. And I swear when you look at his win so far as Arsenal manager, now he's approaching 100 games today. It's a madness. Arteta is getting away with things that Emre was slaughtered for. Emre's lack of English probably cost him. Arteta talks like a politician and tricks people into thinking he knows what he's doing. Harsh. <laughs> 
I love the opinions, though, man. You lot never be scared to say your opinions. This is a safe place, you know, whether you agree, disagree, we respect opinions, as long as it's not just part of me, agenda in and whatnot. And for me, I don't really want to carry on talking about Emre and, and, and versus Arteta car. End of the day, Emre's not here no more. Like, I've, I only really gave up on Emre that last week. You know, I think he done a lot right, but he did a lot mud. I think Emre... I think he probably listened to too many voices in and around him. I didn't think Emre really had clarity. And, you know, for me anyways, if things go wrong for me, I'd want it to be, I'd, I, I would want it to be my fault. Um, I don't think Emre needed time. I think unpopular opinion, Emre needed to go. Arteta has, has at times looked out of his depth. I do feel we always do this thing as fans, you know, we start rose tinting things. And I've seen it with Xhaka. History starts getting rewritten and Xhaka whenever we look shaky in midfield and lose a game, you know. Now, we don't need Xhaka car. We've been winning, allegedly, man. But, yeah, man, away from you know, Emre, he's like, the man, not, you know, fantastic, fantastic, um, fantastic, fantastic coach and that, but it didn't work, man. When Xhaka back, not until the new year, really, it man's out for two, three months at the time of when he got bodied, man. Is what it is, man. On that, on that note, though, people, we've done a... Keep your opinions coming. We've done so much chatting about... about um, about about Josh Cronkay and that you know that we actually haven't read the art this the Sky Sports article. People keep your opinions coming as usual. It's fantastic, fantastic, fantastical. But um, yeah, man, let's actually read it, man. We, you know, we've just been going off on a tangent, people. Um, let me scroll all the way up for you guys as well because it does look like a mad read. Um, let me change this for you. Hit the like button if you haven't. Make sure you're checking the thingies. No rose tinting. I think getting into a finals justified time. I think, well, I do think it's rose tinting. Emre, if you look at Emre, you know, we got a point off the top four, but he had the same problems with Arteta and he did get to a final and I think the players let him down, but I don't think he needed time. You know, you never knew if he's one minute, he's going three, then he's going a four. You know, he lost the players, so it could have got a lot worse. You know, it didn't look like a single thing was happening, really. Yeah, you could say Emre wasn't backed enough, but again, you know, we need to, you know, I don't think, I think time would have made it a lot worse for Emre. Once you lose the players, it's a myth, rightly or wrongly. Like, it doesn't, what, what are you going to get time for? The players are going to turn on you, boy, you're going to look like Oli, where every day it looks like when you watch a movie where, not, you know, touch wood and that pause, we don't advocate it. But you know when you watch a movie and a man or woman in the main character might die and then she goes and watches her funeral? That's what it looks like with Oli. Emre needed to go. Arteta at times has needed to go. We don't need to, because Arteta looks shaky, start making out that our Emre was the messiah and Emre was going to take us to the promised land. He looked like he could at a time, but he played too much cowardly football, much like Arteta. But anyways, moving away from them, we're speaking about too many duds now. Josh Kroenke, exclusive interview with Arsenal director who says club is not for sale and now on path to Premier League success. That Arsenal director Josh Cronkay responds to Daniel Ek takeover bid by saying the club is not for sale and outlines the club's title ambitions in an exclusive interview with Sky Sports' Jeff Shreves. Arsenal versus Watford is live on Sky Sports from 1pm on Sunday. Kickoff is at 2. Forget all of that. DG is live for, Ars for Arsenal versus Watford people. Live from, live from whatever. Where is it? You get me? Right on time. No dislikes yet before they get out of there, people. So, yeah, make sure you're supporting the thing. That's when we're going live at 1pm. But going back to this one, um, let's scroll down. And how long before I get pissed off? Let's finish the tea first. Arsenal director Josh Cronkay says the club is not for sale despite a 1.8 billion bid from Daniel Ek and insists the current owners have big ambitions of their own to bring success back to North London. I'm going to stop you lot very quickly. Keep your opinions coming. This is the first. Now we have the truth. Now, a lot of you might be looking at me and saying, what, what are you talking about? The truth, the truth. Do you remember? Yeah. Now we know that. Well, we don't, but we heard Daniel Ek bidded. But there was a point we heard Daniel Ek bidded, Cronkay and that was saying there's no bid. You know, and then it was like, what's going on? I mean, he hasn't directly said it in this, but I mean, if he's saying there's been a bid, so Daniel Ek might have been telling the truth. Now, these lot have only become full owners of Arsenal since 2018. We know Kronke has had his claws in from what, 07 or something, you know. So they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be, you know, in a in a rush. And if they believe that Kronk, that Arteta, sorry, and Edu with the new young young players are going to get Arsenal back to where they want to be, then they'll probably sell Arsenal at the end of this youth player cycle where maybe Arsenal are in Europe and all of these and, and all of these sort of things, people. So let's go down and see what's going on, you know. 
Kronke and the board did not back Wenger with big money early on at the Emirates. Made to be self-sustaining, sell players. What club using system wins trophies? We all not big up, big up yourself. No, you know uh, Wenger got done dirty, man. Absolutely done disgusting with a lot of that. And then we went from not spending to reckless spending, in my opinion. But um, continuing with this, to be able to get there, you need to have some. You need to have someone respond on the other side. It hasn't happened yet, but we are here to stay. Uh, moving away, people, he went on to say again. So, again, Henri said that there was was So, we don't know what's been going on. So, it comes... It, the truth is now that there's been an offer. You said directly, Josh, there wasn't. So, immediately, you might potentially, quote-unquote, be lying. We get bids for the club all the time from many different parties. And, I mean, we never knew that around the world. And that speaks to the strength of Arsenal. And many of our fans would have seen, you know, we're probably dreaming of Nigerian boy, um, um, oil money, Russian money, Dubai money, Qatari money, you know, just, you know, Swedish billionaire money, just, just some sort of money from somewhere, you know, and bids from different parties. Again, leave that. I'll leave your, your minds to imagine what, where it is there. Um, he said, it's a wonderful institution. Arsenal Football Club is a global brand. And my only response to anything is the club is not for sale. So, again, Arsenal's a global brand. We have, you know, we can leverage that global brand to do what we're doing elsewhere. This is why. The club is not for sale. We've, we're have we just getting started. We've only really owned the club since 2018. We have a young manager. We have a young squad. We are charting our path to the future. We've only really owned the club since 2018. We have a young manager. We have a young squad. And we're charting our path to the future. In the United States, we have a certain model in brackets used at other organisations run by Cronkay Sports and Entertainment. And we're implementing that one here. We have over the last three years, which is young players, talented players with the right mentality. Let them grow together while continuing to sparkle in talent throughout the squad. In theory, can't disagree. In reality, you lot been watching Arsenal. Come on now. Eventually, it grows into something special. The power of continuity behind the scenes and people working together and pulling in the same direction is an underrated aspect of pro sport. No, it isn't because that's all last fans wanted. No, it isn't. You know, with the power of continuity, I can't say that word, and allowing this group to grow together, special times are ahead for this club. Please don't overpromise and underdeliver. Let's underpromise and overdeliver. And I think one thing about Arteta and Edu, they've been very conservative to the point where it's probably annoyed fans really, really, really and truly. Now, you, I'm not saying he's promised a big, a lot of things, but you can see all the sound bites coming out now. We're charting our path to success. Previously, he said, be excited. There is talk about a title, all of these sort of things. It gets the vibe that, not that the, any of these things are wrong, but it's almost like, are you living in La La La? Like, where are you, brother? Like, are you really there? Like, are you deep in, you know, you're just sounding bare positive and that for no reason, really and truly. We were top spenders. We all know we're top spenders, but we spent 150 million revitalizing the spine of this team. We did spend more than, than Chelsea and City. We need to spend more than them. They've got good squads, but they've spent one player, one player each, 90 and 100 million on these players in question. We've spent 150 on what, maybe five, six, maybe, um, really. But yeah, man. Anyways, we know Arsenal spent a lot of money. We spend a lot of money on tickets, but we don't, we're not up there for significant things. But apparently he insists supporters should continue to expect their side to compete with the best in the Premier League and set out the club's strategy to make that a reality. Fans should expect the best. Arsenal fans, better yet, should expect the best. That's what they've expected throughout their history, and that shouldn't change at all. Again, bullish talk. Fans are going to, this. these are the things that are going to piss fans off. You know, because in isolation, it sounds great, but this is just going to stroke the fire, especially because we've won 10 games. Well, we ain't won 10 games. We're not lost in 10. Um, do we have to rethink about how we're going to go about achieving those goals? Absolutely. This summer had really played out. We weren't breaking any transfer windows, any records, sorry, but the net spend was very high. We had many areas we needed to address on the pitch. Those were addressed with the players of a certain quality, of a certain age. And I think what gets left out quite a bit is we needed a change, a few mentalities around here. We needed to get stronger mentally, mentally stronger. That's true. OK, first thing, I, you know, cool. Pardon me. I think from the new signings to the kids that are coming through to the senior players that are setting the tone in the dressing room on a daily basis, that mentality is to go out and compete and leave it all on the pitch. And I know you've all seen in The Athletic, the think pieces that have come out about how Arteta wanted to build more look, togetherness on the field to the point where there's off the field at the, at the training ground to the point where there's a picture of Arsene Wenger with his like doing a high five and the players slap it every day. You know, it sounds quite great and all togetherness. And to be honest, it's just standards. When you look away from us, just standard stuff you'd expect at a football club, but is needed. I can't disagree with this. 
That is a quality that can make our fans proud, win, lose or draw. And that's what I want to see. If you lose, lose, leave and you give it all into the ring, not the numerous self implodement like we got Liverpool if you lose this if you lose to Liverpool but you see Mo Salah do Mo Salah stuff or they do stuff that is what what they've been doing I can't say nothing they've got better players that's a quality player I could sit hold my hands up and say listen from Monday to Friday or Saturday or whatever Monday to Friday what we worked on worked we competed it is what it is you know Salah's a magic player they did magic stuff we lost to the better team too often they're not. It's not that, you know, we're self-capitulating. We're not really competing. And that's been ingrained in us a bit couple times now. But again, it's been nine, ten games today. I need to know that this is the minimum. I need to know, get to a point where 38 games, win, lose or draw. I know there's a certain standard. Of course, you have off days where things are just collapsed. It goes wrong. We've seen this great Liverpool team lose, concede about seven at Villa. Now, that isn't spoken about because it's not needed to be spoken about. Do you get it? So, yeah, man. He said, I think the top teams are in a much stronger position than we are right now, you think? They've had a chance, especially over the last several years, to really build their squads to a different place. So what were you lot doing then? Why these lot were building, what were you lot doing then? You know, they've had, a, you've all had the chance. You lot, you know, Arsenal haven't got here overnight. In the same way, Liverpool, City, definitely where City used to be, they haven't woken up and become Premier League contenders overnight. You don't, you know... If you, you you don't get here overnight, you know, people that have vices in life, like alcohol problems and stuff, you don't get there overnight to be back in bare rum and, you know, to the point where you're taking out loans and you're losing your, you're losing your house and things like that. Or a nitty, you don't become a crazy crackhead overnight. Like, you know, it starts off with their one thing and then it continues. So I don't know what's going on there, really. It's it's, it's, sound, like, it's sounding like we were crippled by something, you know. We had, char if we couldn't do the spending thing, which we've done the reckless one, we could have done the better scouting thing. How many times has Arsenal identified a player, we pussyfoot around it and then they get finessed or we sign players and it's like we haven't done our due diligence. A man might be thriving in a counter-attacking team. We play, we bring him into a team that we don't, that doesn't want to counter-attack and there's no, there's no, there's nothing there. So we can't blame, you know, and to be honest with you, you can, we can say what we want about Emre, about Arteta, about Arsene Wenger, about Clizides, about Raul Sanye, Miss Lintat. Not that you can say anything bad about Miss Lintat. Um, all these guys, they don't own the club. They're all gone now. Well, you know what I'm saying. In the majority are, are gone, with the exception of Emre and and Edu's there now. But the one consonant has been the Kronke. So again, man, I have to look at you and what is saying is saying on what is going on. So I don't know. Our strategy has changed drastically. Now the summer has settled and the players on the pitch were closing the gap slowly but surely. Oh, I don't know. They have a lot. They have lots of resources. We have resources as well. And as long as we're using those resources smart, appropriately and intelligently, one plus one eventually will add up to three. OK. Our goal is to win the Premier League. I'm growing more confident by the day, but there's a lot of work ahead. It almost it, it's almost bordering on that. Like, again, I don't know the context. I don't I can't hear how a man is sounding, but it does border on. Deluded slash complacency slash it's just bare bullish overcome it's just bare bullish talk for no reason like again i like what we're doing just be like it's it's, it's bare bullish talk it's almost like it's like when i sit in rooms about diversity and things and in the hour in a room it's all bullish we're gonna change the world it's all great but when the, when you leave that room what's gonna happen it, it's how i'm feeling with this it feels like yeah you can achieve your goals reach for the stars you can be anything you want to be in life but then once this convo's done like, well, go on for this thing, because the reality is, as you said, people have stronger teams than us. People have stronger people processes off the field than us, more experienced people, better relationships off the field, better playing squads, better scouting, more finances. You know, when we look at the reality, this ain't Disneyland, you know, we're not if we're going to have to use our resources smart, we're going to need to do a thing. You know, we're going to need to do a thing. Whether it's going and scouting a land that no one's looking at or looking at, at people that are being cast cast off, it's not making much sense. But anyways, people, even though we're starting to show signs of progress, if you don't keep pushing, you'll stagnate. That's a big focus on ours right now. What are our next steps? Do we feel good about where we are? We feel better about where we are. Do We don't feel good. Our fans still deserve more, you reckon? We need to get back into the top four. We need to start qualifying for the Champions League regularly. And with the Champions League qualification comes a different level of how you can recruit players. The best players want to play in the best league in the world, which is the Champions League outside of the Premier League. When you start competing consistently for Premier League for the Premier League trophy, 
you're pretty much competing for the rest of the trophies in the sport. So our goal is to win the Premier League. I mean, everyone's got a goal. Everyone wants to be financially free. How many people are willing to go and look at, OK, cool, I need to stop buying this. I need to stop buying that. I can save money here. I can review a bill there. You know, it's painful to do things like that. There's no there's no, there's no, no progress without pressure and, and pain. And you can't have it both ways. We all want that. Everyone wants goals in life. How many people actively are waking up every day, you know? I don't like, because to be honest, this should be the minimum. I should, you know, it does excite me as a fan and the way I'm seeing with Arteta say things like this, but it should be the minimum. You know, it should be the minimum that, that, that you don't want to move to this place. I'm, I'm not being funny, but since, you know, in my lifetime, away from us just not competing for trophies, I'm seeing us getting bullied. There used to be a time Arsenal did the bully in, really and truly, you know, which is crazy. He's right, though, on that so far for what it is. Without context, he's right. Once we're in the conversation for the Premier League, I think that's when interesting things will really start to happen here, happen as well. To get there, you know, you need to find this youthful squad needs to rise in maturity. You're going to need to replace, you know, in a five-year period, you're going to need to look at who replaces Partey, both internally and externally. Aubameyang is not going to be here forever. Lacazette's gone after a year. These are the guys you lot have name dropped as the leaders of the team. Xhaka's not going to be here forever, new contract or not. And he gets cold feet every now and again. Again, succession planning. So who are the leaders? If that, on top of Ramsdale just being a competent keeper, if you had that in mind, I hear that. Tini the same. Hopefully Gabriel ri rises in stature. I'm not being funny. I'm looking at leadership required from Ben White as well and all of these sort of things. But again, you're going to have to have succession planning. Certain players that we might be, you know, certain players that we actually think might be good enough now, if we do improve and we, you know, what let's say a three to four to five year period, certain players might not be good enough to get us over the line. So what's the succession planning? You, you know, you said the goal is to do this and you've probably earmarked where you are. If Arteta is not looking like he can still continue on this train down the road, are you going to clip him? You know, you're going to have to replenish the squad because you've got a young squad, which you shouldn't be relying on Saka Smith throwing that. You've got a 72 million pound man in Pepe that's contracted until 2024. So within the next 18 months, you're going to have to decide what's going on there. A Baron and Lacazette, again, within the next 18 months, you're going to have to decide. Partey is going to be here for a long time, but he's not going to be here forever. There's still question marks over the midfield. Again, footballers can always change their minds and say, I want to leave and do all of this. So there's that. Again, there's a lot of things to consider, boy. But I don't, in isolation, it don't sound bad, didn't it, people? But that's exactly what he's had to say there. And again, I don't know why the timing of this is now. But if maybe it's now actually because the club's a bit positive and like us, we'll, we'll actually listen to what they have to say. You know, if it was at the start of the season, you think I'm sitting here at starting at 10... 10 um 10 20 10 20 a.m in the uk it's a it's a mazza it's a mazza so we'll have to see what he's saying there you lot can judge that one and accept that one for what you you lot want at face value i'm not going to tell you lot what to think as i always say just do think and as i said please make sure you're hitting the like button i appreciate everybody that's locked in and all the talking points you know we're at 148 likes can we rise that up a bit people how you doing dg i'm good man I'm good, my guy. It's a blessing to be here with you lot each and every time. And I, 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 I say thank you for all of this as well. You know, it's a Sunday, whether it's every day you lot support the thing. You lot don't always, don't also support, but you also say your opinions, you know, and it's very interesting. You know, it's not, there's conflicting opinions, different opinions. Every now and again, I see, I see healthy debate um, with the fans. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And as I said, I got my health in it. Bro. I don't even, Colin, we, I think all fans can see. I don't even think it was Arsenal fans. I think, for me, it was the media with how they were talking with Emre. Like, obviously, there's a laugh and a joke, you know, with the good evening. There was an element of funniness about it, but then it went from it being funny to, you know, you're actually killing a guy accent and you're mocking it, you know. And I actually think Emre's grasp of English was quite good, you know, considering he said he was listening to Peaky Blinders and stuff. He's, you could understand him. Sometimes a word might not be here and there. And then people would mock him for his English. These same journalists and stuff that made it a running joke, you know. If he starts saying, all right, cool, let's have a conversation in Russian or let's speak French or let's speak Spanish, the conversation stops. I did think it kind of taught, it, it is a kind of, an, it is a privilege, you know, if you live in the UK or America or where English is a first, first speaking language, you don't deep. Sometimes English is a survival school. How much bare people, you know, I've got a couple Asian friends. They always tell me how, you know, their dads come and set up shops and doing things and they couldn't speak a word of English. Do you, do you, do you know how terrifying that is deep? And obviously, you know, I'm a Jamaican and Bayesian heritage. We've got similar sort of thingies. You know, do you know how scary that must be to go to another country? You don't, you can't speak a word. You're learning off little bits and pieces. You don't know what's going on. You don't, you get it. So 
I, I think it's very um, and and for me, I, I keeping it with Emre, I think it was fantastic because he tried to identify. And with Emre, it made me think. You remember when Poch was here for time? He never spoke English, right? I don't even be. It wouldn't surprise me if Bielsa speaks perfect English, but he's still doing the translated thing. It, I can't say I'm surprised why a man do things like that because if I do that, then you can't twist up my words and make me a joke, man, and do all of these things if I just if I don't say anything, really, man. I think to call it rose tinting is to try to stop us looking back. We need to look back to see what the problems we have now stem from the past, not rose tinting or living in the past, just real. I mean, respectfully, we're going to have to disagree because, again, I don't think you're hearing me. You know, if we don't look in the past, how can we look in the future? You know, throughout that Kong Kronke segment, all we did is look back in the past. I just feel when you look back in the past, history can always be rewritten. Haven't you heard a saying that, you know, only the winners talk about war? Um, only the winners write about war you know stories only written by the winners you know is it necessarily the truth and I think there's a there's a luxury of history and as an Arsenal fan you can do that you know the problems are the managers but the problems are the people employing them you're going to get Emre you're going to have Arteta you're going to have whoever Wenger you're going to have whatever really and truly you know we can look back but I do think history is kind of painting out that Emre was better for Arsenal than he wasn't if he was better than Arteta that's a legitimate cons um, consideration but are we going to sit here and say Emre because you was a better manager than Arteta we shouldn't have sat to you or you should be at Arsenal or should we say was you good enough to be the gaffer where they both had bits and pieces. I, there was a lot of things I liked about Emre. There's things I'm fond of with Arteta. I've said previously, there's certain luxuries that Arteta was just been afforded than, than Emre. But fundamentally, neither man's good enough. And we, yeah, man, that's where I'm at with that, man. Trust me, bro, people need to stop getting gassed over them spending a little money now. It's never going to be enough to take us where we want, to, where we need to be just to maintain their bag. And that's the thing, man. Again, I don't know. I don't know this for true, but I mean, and I'm not criticizing fans, but would we be, you know, would we be this entertaining of the conversation, or you know, would we be this if we were, if we were, if we weren't winning games, you know? Because I'm sure you speak to many people about the Cronkies. They're not going to be fond of them, whether they've invested in the club or not. So it's an interesting debate to have. Based on their recent spending, we can trust them. I like the rebuild on the squad. We just need a lethal young striker and two tough midfielders to make Arsenal competitive again and ensuring the mentality has changed. The process then, Project Youth, what's our next PR catchphrase? We'll find out when we finish mid-table again, three seasons in a row, eight or worse, bro. Hey, man, now let's have a bit of positivity on this Sunday. Everyone that's in church at this moment in time, do your thing. Unai dropped Ozil and played Terrera or Bessett, bro. Yeah, Emre was playing, man, as a 10. This is why I mean Rose tents, tents. He was doing mad things, man. Brand, that's the key word. We aren't a football club anymore, at least not to them. I think it said it there, man. Said it there, innit? Like, I think he said a lot, but also said a little. The Kronke situation with success at the Emirates is very similar with Arteta. They are the dark horse in this race. If they put effort, we can make strides. But if they don't, you already know. Investing in youth because it's cheaper and Kronkes aren't putting hands in their pocket. To be fair, technically they are, but at the same time, they're not. It all depends where you're looking. It's an interesting debate. Crazy man, some it's crazy. I mean, I'm not trying to keep waffling about Emre, but I mean, context without anything. I've said it before. One of my worst times on this YouTube channel was Emre's unbeaten run because there was every week you're seeing problems, but you can't really say anything if you're unbeaten. You know, we're 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 slugging it around and having to score last minute winners against Cardiff, really and truly. You know, it's a fantastic run, but without con, there is no. You're not applying any context. There, context there, Ryan. That was one of, and I'm passionate about that stage because that was one stage I was trying to tell fans, listen, this ain't the thing. Or they say, oh, what we're winning, what we're doing this, what we're doing that. But telling fans about winning runs, fans don't want to hear nothing now. Fans didn't want to even hear nothing when we're playing, what, it's Brighton, fair play to the Chelsea one, but Brighton was shit them times. Brighton, Chelsea, and I'm sure we bought West Brom a Jalbian. Here before we get slapped by Watford and fans get back to reality. None of that positivity only, man. Stan won't sell. AFC is an ego trip. So owner, so control. Get back in top four to bring money in on the Wenger. And he's happy self-sustaining. No, no trophies. And I think that's it as well. But his problem is there's no longer a top. I don't think top four is a myth. I, genu I wouldn't call it an achievement, but I genuinely think a team 
that finishes in the top four now is going to be consistently is going to be an achievement. I, the way football is moving, it won't surprise me in the next five to ten years. Maybe that's a bit soon, but every club can get relegated, every team can get promoted. That's where we're heading, in my opinion. And right now, there's mini leagues going on. Everyone, you know, Norwich still go down for me, without a doubt. Norwich are down, you know. But saying that, psh, you know, I thought Newcastle could get out of it. I, they're probably done. They're ahead of Newcastle now. You know, Spurs were the worst thing ever. Look at the mathematics, where they are. United were winning leagues. Even, you know, where are they? And if they start winning, what's happening? Arsenal were getting relegated. You know, you've got the top three in their own league. You know, West Ham as well could be in that top three, um, you know, mathematically. But you've got, you know, you've got a top three. Then you've got, what, West Ham, Leicester, Everton, United, Arsenal, Spurs. Everyone fighting to bag, you know, that full spot, ideally, if you can get fifth or sixth. So, again, I don't know if being self-sustaining, unless you have a squad or to the levels of what we've seen with some of these boys in the league, I don't think we can afford to do that. I don't think it, we're going to get into a territory like that. You know, the key, as you said, we need to show we can qualify for the Champions League, do it again and build from there. But yeah, man, if we lose to Liverpool, we can excuse our tech for that. Anfield is a hostile pitch for any team. Josh, it all depends. Uh, you know, it's, it's how you lose. And that's been the problem with Arsenal, whether we play big teams or not, is how you lose. You know, and there's too many times when Arsenal have lost, there's problems that we've made. And it's not we're not looking at the team and saying, yo, all right, cool. Their mind are good. But it's like, yeah, they might have Salah. But then people are playing five-yard under-hit back passes and Salah's running in and scoring. You never made Salah have to do Salah stuff. For example, that's what I need to... If uh, There's nothing I can do there. If we're playing a team we lose and they're better than us and they show some quality, what could you say, really and truly? There must have been teams that, you know, they tried to match us. No, Henri's bullied them. What can you say, man? Closing the gap. What's finishing eighth last two seasons and out of the Champions League for five years? I don't know. Just finished a seven-hour tattoo session. Keen to get cool with this, bro. Big up yourself. Seven hours, bro. I, you can't put a bumper sticker on Ferrari, so I can't do the tacting, but I hear it. That must have hurt, man. <laughs> this channel should be called Not As Deluded As The Owners, Guna. Hey, man. <laughs> a lot more to do. Need another, spend, another summer or two of spending and a good manager. If Arteta becomes good, fine. But if not, the axe needs to fall on his neck. Rawr. This club has become has very quickly become a joke. We're accepting mediocrity, getting excited over a 10 on beaten run. I will not back this fraud. Arsenal fans need to wake up. Fair enough. We wanted them to say what our target was and they have. We should now hold them accountable for their word or promises. At least the Cronkay's perception of what not winning cups has changed. I don't. I don't think it has. For saying that, I mean, under their leadership, we've won quite a few FA Cups, to be fair. You know, I would I wouldn't say that. What? 2014. The next season, there's Defo 2 of recent against Chelsea. So that's maybe four off the top of my head. Are you doing? I'm good, my guy, man. I'm good. It's a productive day. we got hella content to be rocking with and doing today. So, yeah, it's a privilege, man. Do you think Arteta will ro rotate Odegaard and Lacazette to match the opposition's formation? Odegaard against a free in midfield and Lacquer against back threes. I'm not too sure, but for today, I think he's going to... I could be wrong. My gut is telling me Lacazette is going to be dropped. He's going to go with one up front. Smith Rowe's going to move back to the left. And then that's how you get Odegaard there, man. We'll finish in top six and winning Carlin Cup be a success. I mean, I can't say getting into Europe and winning a trophy on top of that isn't a success, but I would say, all right, say nothing then. Like, we can move with that. And, I, you know, you'd have to say it's a success, really, because we finished eighth, really. Realistically, it would be. It's not quite the success we want, but I would say it's a success. Wary of the word success, but you get where I'm going, man. Liverpool are pretty self-sustaining. It can be done, but not with... <laughs> I, you know, I'd watch the Liverpool space because as great as Liverpool are, they're going to need to rebuild. I don't know how long Klopp's going to be there. You look at their players. Yeah, they've got a Curtis Jones and a Harvey Elliott. And I'm not saying Salah and these guys are going to go anywhere anytime soon. Salah's at least got another four or five years in him at 29. But these men are what I'd describe as the present. There's not too many young replenished sort of squads. So we're going to have to see what's going on where Liverpool are concerned. But yeah, man. Man said, self sustaining with other clubs having oil, sugar daddies, ask yourself where that gets us. It could get us a lot further, but facts, bro, is bringing a knife to a gunfight. In fact, it's probably bringing a straw to a gunfight, really. 
Josh Cronkay chose the right time to release that interview, though. I'm not going to lie. Of course he did, bro. You know, that was probably brewing. That was probably brewing from when we was getting smacked up at the start of the season. But you know, say you can't think of that. Do you think Everton have any chance against Spurs? I mean, I hope so. They were flying high at the start of the season. I hope to, um, Andros Townsend could say something against his old team. But it's looking like a myth. Big up my Jamaicans locked in and all the other Caribbean regions as well. British people go all over the world to live and don't learn the language. Most of the journalists mocking Emre probably couldn't say as much as good evening in Spanish. Exactly. And they'll just stay around the tourist bits of the country. You know, they'll, they're basically still in England, really and truly. It's crazy, man. I think the last transfer window was purchased, but was was purchased forced by need. I, don't, I, I hear you, but we needed to revamp that team, man. Is what it is, man. Interesting comments, man. I don't, you know, I love no one's fighting each other, man. <laughs> you all just said interesting comments, man. Do you think Kronke is gonna do? Is gonna do when say United. What do you think? Sorry, Kronke is gonna do when United Newcastle United comes silly money for Saka. You know what time it is. Man didn't even show up to a gunfight. He just showed up, bro. Man just called the feds, bro. <laughs> it's one of them ones, man. I just hired it at that man. Arteta was chosen for the long term. You have to consider that when you judge his results. Yeah, but as I always say, Rome wasn't built in a day. But I'm sure there was a planner every day looking at it and saying, "Okay, cool." That pillar needs to be up like this. Why is that pillar not up? Where's the materials? Where's the plumbers? Where's the electricians? Do you get it? Just because you've got an exam at the end of the month, you know, it doesn't mean you don't need to do something today, tomorrow and whatnot, little bits of revision to get there. Or you're just going to wake up a day before the exam and say, let me just try to read the whole book. It don't work like that. We know Arteta is here for long term, isn't it? That's why we're, we're, that's why we're especially harsh when we're saying, what is the system then? You know, what are you trying to do? Now we see young players and whatnot. We can see whatever. Last season, when backs were against the wall, he was going for the experienced man and they were letting Donny down time and time again. Ben White is quality and will only get better. I like I like Ben White still, but I just think the jury's still out. I haven't been wowed yet. I'm not trying to judge a man to his price tag, but I just feel if Gabriel's a good player, you know, and I know some of you used to try to lie to yourselves and say Marie's the best at this club, but I just feel if I didn't know nothing about Arsenal, it looks like Gabriel's the new centre half for 50 mil. So want to see a bit more coming out of his shell. Just want to see a bit more, you know. Don't think he's justified the price. I don't think there's question marks. I just think he's been calm. I think there's a lot he needs to work on defensively, but other than that, it seems cushy right now. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, man. It seems kind of cool right now, man. So Leave leave that for what you want. With the level of improvement of the title challenges, we have to be realistic with our current plight. The squad has just had a major rebuild. I too have watched Arsenal since 1987. Pragmatism. Exactly. I don't think any... For me, I don't think we can look at and say Arsenal need to win the league. I think a top six finishes will be lucky to finish in Europa League. But at the same time, I just want to... It don't matter if you get promoted. And Cam, I know you agree anyways. It don't matter if you get promoted or whatever. You just want to see what the team's about. And that's what I want to see. Right now, whether we win, lose or draw, all right, man can see what Arsenal is meant to be this year, you know, if it makes sense. Ben White is talented. He has the ability, he has the ability to become one of the best, but 50 mil was nuts. And all I hope is that, bro, he's 23. At the end of the day, bro, you know, he's going to be here for time. It's going to look like that. I'm just saying out of all the new signings, Ram's still, all right, cool. For me, the 30 mil, the 30 mil's... It's, it's there, isn't it? Like, even if he did, he doesn't improve, which I hope isn't the case, we can make our bread back. We're going to make that back. Lokonga, I think, still a lot raw, as expected. He's doing his thing. Tomiyasu, couple question marks, but done his job. I think he's justified his thing. Ben White, you can't control your price tag, but I'm like, all right, cool, you know? Because at the start of the summer, if we were saying centre-half and, and keeper, like I said at the start, I wasn't against Ben White or Ramsdale, but I wasn't saying either one. Now, Ramsdale, all right, cool, maybe I should have been saying you. Ben White, I'm like, all right, I'm not seeing why we could have, you know, if I'm playing a bit devil's advocate right now, and things can change, and I like him. I'm not saying he's poor. You know, I backed him when people are getting onto him against Brighton. Um, on the 7th of November, 2021, I'm just looking at it and saying, all right, cool. 50 mil Ben White's calm Ball playing Decent and that But I right, Could we have spent that You know Could you have got A, a centre half for cheap And considering We need a midfielder the, the the difference That would have been You know Could you have got A defender Same levels for 25 You know And then that 25 Could that have been Thrown on to something And got a midfielder That's just the way I'm looking at it It makes me feel You know What were the other Centre half targets Sort of thing But I like what I like what Ben White's doing In it but I just think, yeah, that's when I'm watching. I haven't been wild yet, sort of thing. I was wild in preseason. I went to the the one against Spurs, and he was very vocal. 
So I like what I'm seeing from him, but yeah, man, that's just me, in it? I'm not judging him to 50 mil, it's just like lay down a marker, in it? Like Ramsdale's laid down a marker, I know what you're about, sort of thing. Well, go on, my guy. Hope you're doing well and safe. The tank making is a resurgent smart for selling ability alone. I mean, and I hope that there's offers for Eddie and Kitty and Kalajanach potentially just off on that topic in this, in January. That's a couple things we need to do as well as bringing a man in. For me, Ramsdale was still a madness at that price. We sold Martinez for half the price. I would say it's less to do with Ramsdale and more to do with just our reactive thinking. You betted on Leno. He snaked you and now you're seeing it. I mean, I considering the English premium, 24 million with an extra six, I feel I can cope with that. Ramsdale, we're seeing different sides of you. The fact that he's a goalkeeper, you're going to have them man there by God's grace for a decade and that man's 23. He don't even look it. He looks like he's 29 and uh, don't think he's ever been ID'd in his life. So 30 million for me, I can live with that. And I know, say, I don't. I know English teams. They want more upfront pro, pro, um, payments, but I know say Arsenal are not running 24, 26 million up front. I know that's it will give you a fiver here, and my mum's gonna give me ten pound here, and I get paid at the end of the month, and my job seeker is landing here, and man's got a nine here. I'm gonna flip it, run my man is re up, and I'll run you some bread there. And next month is this, and all of that. My partner money's coming in, and it's one of them ones in my opinion, like. So I can live with that. The 50 million, I'm like, boy, God. I'm looking at Brighton. I'm like, boy, the man there don't look like they're missing Ben White. I like Ben White, but not really shut. But I ain't really seen the, the mad thing yet. I ain't, you know, you shut up, you shut up Harry Kane. You did you done well, but it's like I ain't really for 50 mil, man wanna scream you're one of the best in the league and all of these sort of things. And I I don't think it's adapting yet. And again, this is it, it's nothing to do with Ben White. This is just me, like, all right, boy, you know. It's one of them, man. Three point collectors. Let's go. Come on. Saliba might be putting PSG in his back pocket. Everybody, everybody talks about that. And I'm not saying to critic, it's just, you know, everybody talks about that. No one's going to talk about the mistakes against Lazio. Or was it it might not have been Bordeaux, but there was one where he's basically conceded the pen. No one's going to talk about the bad moments, man. Man said British and Edison. <laughs> In all fairness, at least he's actually coming out and giving interviews. Would Stan ever do that? Well, Stan, does Stan, Stan even know his son is doing the interview? No, I think that's harsh, man. I mean, it clearly is good value for money in hindsight. I, I would have been with you at the start and saying we're overpaying. But in hindsight, that will be 30 million well spent, man. In a day and age where Arsenal have made a lot of issues with their signings, I think somehow convincing Liverpool and, and, and Everton, I don't know what they smoke over them sides, but convincing them to to pay over over 30 odd million, 25, 30 plus million for Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. And it will be, boy. You know, Arsenal do a lot of dumb things, but every now and again, there's there's some sort of finesse. It, it just, I wish that it, it's probably like like eight two in that regards. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already, people. One love to everybody that's tuned in as well. Almost at two hundred likes. Interesting comments all the way, though, folks, nonetheless. Saliba will be better than White Over, who is younger and has a high ceiling. Bring it come. Like, for me, I just go and do it. Calf, we've got, um, you know, if the price is high, it's not good value. Not really, because you could, you know, Liverpool paid 70-odd million for Van Dijk. You could say the price was high at the time, regardless of him being a good player, and he went and done it. As long as you've done your due diligence, for me, 30 million for someone that's 23, that... Again, a football career is different and things could happen. But someone at 23, 30 million, someone that could be here for, for 10 years or so, look at the cost. And then he's coming. He's not. Really, he's going to get new deals and whatnot, especially as he progresses. But he's not ruining your, your way structure. How is that not good value? That's a lot, you know, that's a good duration. That's like buying, buying a, 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 you know, if you buy any other item in a shop, yeah, and it's, and you've spent thirty, you spent 30 whatever equivalent and it lasts for a while. You have to say that's good duration. I can't lie to you. Watford score prediction. I'm shook, man. I'm gonna say two one Arsenal. Nah, bro. They respected Wenger. That's why they paid for Oxlade. Who is giving good interviews? <laughs> Brighton didn't want to sell as well. What Ben White? It seemed like they were happy to sell, bro. 
we sold a better keeper for half the price. I mean, we did that a year before, man. And I, can we honestly say <laughs> now and I say like Martin is better than Ramsdale? Because I've always said I think people guess guess Martin is as great as I think he is. No one talks about them. No one's waffling about them shaky ones the other day against West Ham for for Martin is. You know, everyone now West Ham to be. I mean, it's now Aston Villa looking shaky. It's not being said, and that that that's exactly and that, that could be right. But again. That's not on Ramsdale. That actually doesn't mean if Ramsdale's good value or nothing. That's Arsenal fucking about. You know, you sold one thing and bought another. He can't be in control of that. You can't use that as a stick to beat him with Paul's car. And I beat man with stick and then ding there. But anyways. <laughs> oh, man. Wait until this behind the scenes documentary is released. You look back in our tech are gonna are gonna want to hide after this after the beginning of the season, release his shambles. In my opinion, Martinez is the best keeper in the league when you leave passing out of it. Fair enough. For me, this is just another great PR stunt by, from the Cronkays. Lots of talk, but can they back it up? They talk about diversity, but but there is not even a woman on their multiple culture backgrounds. But we're all pissed about Martinez last year, but Ramsdale signing corrected all that and more. Yeah, you just want to hope the club be less reactive in that regard. Stop getting in those situations. Stop acting like you owe certain players things. Is what it is, man. Interesting comments. If we win today convincingly, then expectations will be big after the international break. Pressure on. For me, you just got you got to win, innit? You got to win because we all know who you got after the international break. Give yourself that insurance, innit? Rat Martin has been having a hard time recently. Skipping right over Runderson there. To be fair, should we <laughs> just jump over that one? You know, you know what? I don't even get him because you just look like you, you. He just looked like he won a lucky dip. He won a, like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. He just he just won something and got to be able to manage to be at Arsenal. And I think that them signings there, when someone's not on of the level, I don't even look at the player. I'm like, how did he get through the door? Because nobody just says I'm gonna sign one player. Someone's had to have watched a couple of games. Someone's had to have. Seen, we can go on YouTube and type in Renaissance and you see what happens. So when them lot got we scout and all of these sort of things, you know, and all these ones where they can scrutinize a player's performance, well, like five to ten people has to have seen this happen and like, and somebody's co-signed it. Whether it's the goalkeeper and coach, what somebody sanctioned that two point odd million spent. This is where we're at. So it's one of them. It's 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 one of them ones for me. Interesting debates, interesting comments all the way, folks. Keep on coming. The biggest ha robbery has to be a Wobby to Everton. We <laughs> got them there, bro. Shout out to a Wobby. He's an agent, man. He's doing what he needs to do for us people. Um, so that is where it is. But I would love, I told you, look, Qatari money, Arab money, better American money, rich English money, Nigerian oil money. Anyone who wants to buy Russian money, anyone who wants to buy Arsenal and try and do make us do the mad thing, I'm on it. I'm on it. I, I'm fully on it. I'm sorry. We tried to do the FFP thing. It's not for us, man. We tried. Everyone's bringing guns to the fights. No one wants to do a punch-up anymore. So we, it's either we stop crying about people using weapons or we get our own things. So it's up to us, people. You know, We need to grease down the mash, put the bells in, you know, chop chop the shot here, make sure we do what we need to do, man. Been far, been a fan too long to understand how this Arteta has gotten so long to correct mistakes that he keeps repeating. Can't believe I missed most of the stream. YouTube notifications need to pattern up. YouTube's going to do you lot dirty, which is why I tell you lot the community tab, the community tab, you, and, and to follow me on YouTube, I mean on Twitch. That's the Arsenal versus versus Watford live what reaction. This is the watch along. Big up to the 16 people who hit the like button there, by the way. We've got West Ham at 4 p.m. as well. Yo, oh, the Suarez thing, people trying to be smart. Bro, someone must have just got paid. You see, when you see Renaissance, someone must have just pocketed something there, man. Someone must have pocketed something. DG, you reckon we can get a result against Liverpool? Do you see that as a free hit? Listen, I I I I, I would say both because I want to see us try. I want to see a perform. I want us, like I said, 
Liverpool are a quality team. Make them look like the team that battered United. That not that that's hard to do. That's that's played well against City. That's won league the league in Champions League of recent. If you make force them to their absolute maximum, what can I say? I can't expect my young side to do much. We hope, but I can't expect that. What I don't want is yeah, they've got Salah in these guys, but we're playing silly back passes. Where you know we're just switching off. You know whether we win, lose, or draw, it be a true reflection of our level if we can compete. You know that's what I want to see. In the grand scheme of things, I will say it's a free hit because, again, without wishing on a star, probably not of the level to win that game, in it. So this is why even more reason you need to beat Watford. You have a week or two weeks or whatever to plan for Liverpool. Whatever happens, happens. And then we get back on it. I say in that, we've got United the next week and Everton and all of these games. They're not unbeatable, but it is what it is. Too many fans think they know everything. Back your team, back the manager, the rest will follow 5-0 to Arsenal for the good. I mean, you don't have to back anyone blindlessly, which I know you're not saying. Everyone's allowed an opinion. But yeah, man, generally, I hear you, man. I hear you loud and clear. I wasn't happy with Ramsdale Price, but I think he'll become one of the better goalkeepers in the league. Eventually be England's number one. His value is due to go up a lot. Hear that? Hear that? Hear that fully, bro. Hear that fully. Bro, we're not getting top dollars from any of these players with Arteta as manager. To be fair, he's not in charge of player sales. That's on Edu and, and Edu's people. They're minute day after like Arteta's not there negotiating player sales. He might say, this player isn't in my plans. But yeah, man. Emery suffers from the same three-year cycle as Mourinho. I mean, even the Villarreal job, it looks like it's crazy. I'm not going to lie, I'm more pissed Josh has a beard than I don't. <laughs> Arteta is one of these blokes who have the gift of the gab. That's why he's back more than Emre and why the players have not turned against him yet. He just tells them what they want to hear. Harsh, because he has made some tough decisions with dropping certain players and some unhappy players. But yeah, man. Arteta could could describe himself farting and the, the media will say he's a genius. Right. <laughs> Some of you are, un are relentless in your unforgiving nature, but it might mean never to get you get on you lot's bad side. Bloody hell. Some of you are never. Bro, as a baller, do you want to play for Arteta type manager? Uh, the thing is, what what is an Arteta type manager? What is he? Because I've seen certain people in projects like this. When you look at Le Le Leipzig and, and Salzburg, I would. It all depends. I'm not gonna lie. I probably would want to play for Arteta. I mean, I'm listen. I, I'm not saying it's top and stuff, but some of the things he says, I'm like, well, I might you do. But on the other hand, I'm like, ah, we can't lose versus Everton and United. I hope not, man. Praying Oli will still be in charge by the next time we play them next month. Saying that, you know, I think the best time to sack Oli, if you do have a man lined up and that is now, isn't it? You've got international breaks. Do that now. Give him a little week or something to train his new boys up. Ain't going to change much. But yeah, man. I don't know why, but I fancy us against Liverpool. Madness, I just have a feeling. Hopefully, man. And if we win, I need the lottery ticket numbers from you, my dude. You know, if that's the case, it, it, it might be a tig like that. It might be. Make sure you're hitting that like button. I'm just trying to enjoy the ride. Bro, I'm just... That's where I'm at with us doing it. Like, I think we're going to... Hopefully not too many lows of, of what we saw at the start of the season with COVID and everything considered. But we're going to have that. We're going to have the Palace games and the Brighton games where we just didn't turn up or we've had three points in our grasp and we've we've effed it up. This is what this young and naive team is going to do. You know, and this isn't me being negative. It's a fact, bro. These men are... At average age of 23, they're going to learn harsh lessons. And then you've got man that... You got a 23-year-old like like Ramsdale, who is for me anyway, significantly more experienced than Ben White. And saying that there shouldn't, there's not too much in it because Ben White's played for Leeds. You know, he's played the Newport at loan. He's done his thing. But Ramsdale's been at Wimbledon. He's 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 been released by clubs. He's not always been first choice. He's been dealing with doubters. He's been in that relegation environment. You know, Ben White's only played in the Premier League for one season. So you know, when you look at it, man, at all different spectrums in terms of development and all of these sort of things. So, again, this we're going to make mistakes. Certain players are going to be the heroes one week. You know, Gabriel's got a mistake in him. Ramsdale's got a mistake in him. Ben White's got a mistake in him. Tommy yasu has got a mistake in him. Lokonga and Partey had, had well, it's focusing on Lokonga. He's got a mistake in him. Smith Rowe and Saka are not there yet. Martinelli, when playing, is not there yet, you know. 
These guys are going to have mistakes. They're going to be villains and heroes one week. And that's what I expect to this young team. All I ask is that we maximise when we're good and we minimise when we play poorly. And if, you know, the teams that are able to do them things over a 38-game period finish higher. The table don't lie. It don't. Certain people that you didn't rate might end up... Like I've seen United somehow end up second. I've seen Leicester for the last two years cock up um, Champions League. But it doesn't lie. There's reasons for that for and against. Eddie Howe is going to Newcastle. He was there yesterday, isn't it? It's mad. Basuma and Izak can be signed with 80 million. We're trying to pay for Vlahovic. I mean, let's leave the Basuma one alone. He's doing the mad thing, really. Leave them and they're alone. I wouldn't want to play for him. I would have gone nuts on him after the Villarreal business. Some of the things he's done would have made me fall out with him. Probably. I mean, it's naive to assume people haven't fall out, fallen out with him, if I'm honest with you. I would imagine so, because there's been too many. What's going on there? What's happening there? What's 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 what's, what's that about? What, what's that? You get it? Like, all of them thing there. Like, it's, there's bare of that. I think we fans that forget. We fans forget that Arteta is just in the process of being a manager, just as he claims the club is itself is going through a process. And that's true. But again, Arteta is not going to be at Arsenal forever. He's going to go off for one day and have a decent career. And we can't just be developing a gaffer for no reason. So I hear you. But that's, you know, there's no romance around it. Because, again, you you obviously judge him accordingly and whatnot. But psh, are you going to be a man, Arsenal's manager for the next 10 years? Probably not. You're going to go off and do other things. So is this Arteta FC or Arsenal FC? No one's above criticism. I always say, for me, when you do well, I'll give you all your flowers. When it's a constructive criticism thing, you need to hear it. You know, we're never going to be extremely happy or extremely sad. Um, you know, when there's warrant, it's fair play. And I, I don't think anyone's above criticism. And I feel us as a fan base and as a club, we've kind of got there. And anything said, especially when you're winning games, people are accusing you of being negative and whatnot, man. The EG would have gone mad on our tech. We all saw you last season. Hey, hey, less of that, less of that. <laughs> probably. <coughs> probably. <coughs> You're gonna <coughs> hey, you made me laugh and I'm gonna die on the thing. <coughs> hey, well, I would have got to be fair, I would have got done like when Dozy quick time. I can't lie, I would have got done. I would have got wrapped up, I'd have been I'd have been gone. I'd have been done. I really would have been done. Would you swap Arteta with Arsenal right now? Yeah. Pra yeah. I can't lie, man. As much as Wenger needed to go, there's better things Wenger used to do. I'm like, sorry, people. It was cool. Like, Wenger had bare problems. I'd rather just deal with them problems there, innit? Like, Wenger, there was, you know, for me, under Emre and Arteta, it's been the style of play, man. Like, I know even when em Arte even when Wenger's one, sorry, was falling off, like, Man is still trying to pass a ball forward and there was a couple of luxuries that as an Arsenal fan, definitely someone at 26 years of age that's re really only known Wenger and, until this thing, you know. It's like, raw, like, man, I'm not even passing the ball forward again. Like, Wenger would have that at least, man. Like, DG, your thoughts on Gondos? Is he good enough for the starting 11 at Arsenal? He's good enough to compete in this current system that's going, but yeah, man, my thoughts on Gondos, he's terrific baller. I would like him to be here, but, but I've made peace. It's done, man. <laughs> Man said rose tint in DG. Bear rose tints, bro. But unlike you, Ryan, I'm looking see when I'm rose tinted, my guy. 100% <laughs> rose tinted. What's your prediction for today, then, if you've not already said so? I think tricky 2 1, greasy 2 1. A proper manager. Oh, say that's not for me. DG dying out here. I was dying, broski. Kickoff is two hours away. On that note, though, people, I'm actually going to close up now. Let me go eat and calm down and all of those sort of things before we go live again. Last question, DG, who would you want us to sign for January that is realistic? Not sure, but would love us to try for Bruno Guimaraes at Lyon. You know, Eddie wanted him before. Go and get that one confirmed, man. You know, go and go and get that one done. But on that, though, people, man, you know, let me take a quick break. We're here in 59 minutes again, 1 p.m., Arsenal versus Watford. Make sure you're all here. If you can't be, I beg you, hit the like button. You know, do what you can for the engagement. These things make the world of a difference. Obviously, West Ham versus Liverpool as well. That's going to be at 4 p.m. after our game. Um, again, I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about Arsenal. We're going to be doing an Arsenal Watford reaction. So make sure you're there, folks. So, yeah, man, content, content, content. This has been a fantastic one. We've spoken about, you know, we've spoken about Josh Kroenke and we've stayed here rambling for hours. It's always an appreciative to be here. I'm always appreciative of the support you guys give me. You know, I've been there, out here in your numbers. But, yeah, man, let me go eat something. Come back in just under an hour. We go again, people. On that note, DG. Oh, 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 oh,
think I've been given like DG goal 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 goal